Welcome to Connections with BCD Travel, an ongoing conversation about the modern day travel program, the impact of technology, and how travel buyers can take control and drive change. What are we waiting for? Let's start connecting. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I am your host, Chad Lemon. And I'm Miriam Moscovich. We love hearing from you, so please head to bcdtravel.com slash podcast to connect with us. Just like the sweet comment we got from our listener, Camila, on our Women in Business Travel episode, thanks for listening. So on today's The Quick 60 in Business Travel, I want to stick with the report we talked about last time. You mentioned Lux Light Travel, and that really stuck with me because that is exactly the type of traveler I am. So for those unfamiliar, what else can you tell us about Lux Light Travel? Well, I think one of the interesting things is how this premium economy um, type product came about. You know, the mid-class, as Virgin's product was known at the time, was uh, introduced responding to strong demand for the product. At the time, many businesses were reviewing their travel policy, something that I think really resonates today. And they found it necessary to downgrade from business class or first class down into some sort of a premium economy product. So Virgin developed what they called mid-class at the time to satisfy those business travelers' requirements for improved comfort and segregation and priority and check-in um, and service at that lower price point. Well, and, and we know now that some airlines are still just coming to the party on this. So even at this late stage, there's still first full service airlines that are just now investing in premium economy type products. And as recently as 2022, Swiss became the final Lufthansa group carrier to introduce premium economy seating when they installed 24 seats on their Boeing 777-300ERs. So there's still a lot of movement going on, and we still haven't completely finished the story on what's going on with premium economy. I think another interesting point is how they're configuring cabins in order to accommodate the premium economy seating. So whether that is coming from the first class or business class cabin uh, to increase premium economy or whether they're drawing it from the economy class uh, and upgrading their premium economy. Either way, there's a finite amount of space in an aircraft cabin and the airlines are all dividing that up uh, differently due to the demand that they're seeing. So definitely an interesting topic. I'm glad you brought it up and we'll continue looking at it uh, for the future. But enough about that. Let's get to today's episode. You know, I feel like I say this all the time, but I am really looking forward to this one, not only for the discussion, but our guest is hands down one of my favorite colleagues here at BCD. Yeah, she's pretty great. Today we have Kate Shirley based in the Atlanta metro area. Kate works on our travel data insights product team, and she's got some really groundbreaking news to share on this episode. Kate, welcome to Connections. I'm glad we finally were able to get you on. For those unfamiliar, can you explain what BCD's Travel Data Insights team is? What are you all responsible for? Certainly. And first off, thank you guys for having me. I think I might yeah. be a bit overly excited about being here. I can talk <laughs> for days welcome. about data, things related, oh. so you'll need to rein me in. <laughs> yeah, of um, course. The Travel Data and Insight team overall is responsible for taking our raw data and creating insights. Um, we do that for any of our constituents, both internal and external, through equal parts data science and innovation. Uh, I personally oversee our flagship analytics platform, Decision Source, so I get to go out and talk to our customers, meet their needs on new features, keep an eye on the industry for trends, etc. As a former travel manager myself, Kate, I know how important travel data is, but it feels like most of the time we're just talking about travel data. We don't talk too much about actual solutions. Well, Miriam, I'm half tempted to ask you, what were some of the biggest headaches you faced when you were a travel manager? Well, related to data, I would say, right, it comes in two areas. One was always timeliness of the data. Um, it was available a few weeks after the end of a month of a cycle, and I just sort of had to know what the cadence of data was when I was trying to use you know, data to make decisions, at least in real time, that was really hard. Uh, and I think the other thing was you know, the the amount of analytical work you have to do with the type of data that comes in a report uh, to get to the answer you're looking for. So, you know, pivot tables and sorting and resorting and, and, and things like that. Um, just time consuming and you've got to think your way through that process. And so those are always some of the big challenges I had in, you know, solving problems or answering questions in my old role um, that were always a challenge. Well, Kate, what do you and the team hear as some of the largest headaches when it comes to data? I'd assume clean, accurate data has to be one of them, right? Yeah, that's always something that comes up as data cleansing and refinement. And, you know, we have a proprietary process at BCD 
that produces really what I think is the best data in the industry. But yeah. what good is that data if it's impossible to read? So is it too raw or even overly visualized? Um, you know what I'm talking about, which are the beautiful charts and graphs and highs and lows, but that's not going to give you what you need when you're looking for an immediate answer is. So the answer to that question is in most cases, travel managers aren't data analysts and they feel like they've strayed too far from their program basics. And this is why we continue to innovate on our data engagement models to hit the sweet spot for them of exceptional data coupled with engagement model options that will work for all. And I think anyone who's familiar with BCD is familiar with Decision Source, our data platform, right? Right. Yeah, our flagship data and analytics tool, um, what I believe is one of the most flexible and powerful tools in the industry. Um, it's the big data behemoth, the big data monster, <laughs> period <laughs> over period, year over year. It can handle it, and it's going to give you that strategic and analytic type of data. Well, yeah, but we're not here to talk about Decision Source. Well, not exactly anyway. We have some exciting news about a Decision Source feature release that's poised to kind of change the data game. Uh, not just change the game, Chad, but for data geeks like myself, it's work life changing. <laughs> I am here to announce our newest method of data engagement, Instant Query, now available in Decision Source. All right, Kate, tell me more about the development. Did we build all this ourselves? And why did you build it? So IQ was both uh, conceptualized and developed in-house by our data scientists, our developers, and the product peeps like myself, mm -hmm. which sidebar is the best case scenario for our customers because we control features, we control the roadmaps, the timelines, and the need was very plainly a way to get quick answers to hot program questions. Mm -hmm. um, the why we have, the big data analytics platform and decision source, we wanted to offer a data ninja of sorts, an engagement model mm. for fast answers to specific program questions. Um, IQ or Instant Query really provides that along with in-platform capabilities that no other reporting platform offers. Um, sorts, filters, data constraining, column moves, uh, build your own ad hoc queries, even emailing right from the platform, all without having to leave. So we're excited about it. I got to say, though, when you first showed me prototypes, I don't know, maybe about a year ago, it was one of the only types that I had seen a prototype where I had screamed out loud, right? When you sh <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not exaggerating. That's the kind of validation here. I love for you. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. screamed out loud because she showed me a very common, and, and hopefully we'll talk about this here on the podcast, but she showed me a very common thing that travel managers do all the time. And she did it in like two seconds, and she, nobody needed to help. And, and I, yeah, I just, I audibly screamed and I said, this is about as much power and control as a travel manager has been able to have in the moment that I've ever seen. So it was quite a wow. dramatic yeah. moment. And, and that, all of that really does sound great, Kate. And I know you just mentioned how it solved a need. So would you say that's kind of like the why behind Instant Query's development or was it more than that? Well, it was really, it was many things, but again, we continue to have to meet the need and want to meet the need of every customer we have from the most analytical, deep dive data person to those who just need a quick answer and have minimal experience with data analytic modeling. So by having both decision source reporting and now IQ, we've covered the varying experience levels. Yeah. Um, for example, and that will mean something more in a minute. <laughs> okay. uh, we have a current customer who designs and builds reusable rockets and spacecraft um, and routinely have a need for parts or inventory to be hand carried between a very specific market pair. They were actually part of our pilot and created a custom query that with one click identifies travelers in that market pair and has the ability to email them directly from IQ to ask the question. Um, that account, if you haven't guessed already, is SpaceX. Uh, oh, yeah. and we are the agency of record for them. And to quote them directly, IQ has been the best source to execute the scenario. So wow. it's literally two clicks between login and results, uh, instant answers. So when they need to move apart between two locations, they just quickly querying the system and saying, who's the next employee we have on a flight between here and there. And let's call them and see if they can grab that part and take it to the next place. Exactly right. But they don't even have to pick up the phone. They can actually just click on the email from the query results and send an email directly to them and ask them if they're willing to carry, hand carry that part or that inventory. Wow. wow. All right. So fast. That's a so fast. Solved. That's amazing. All right. Yeah. 
I know it's hard to audibly give a tour of a product or feature, but can you describe some more functions of Instant Query that really set it apart? Uh, yeah. I mean, with IQ, there's no longer a need to export raw data. And then you go in and you have to add pivot tables and sorts and filters and analyze it. Mm -hmm. um, everything in this new platform from click and drag grouping, sorting, filtering, data constraining, and then being able to like save that custom query for one click retrieval. Um, that's probably uh, one of the biggest things that set it apart. And we offer what's called, and we created this, a BYO or build your own query, um, which we kind of stumbled on organically when we were developing. Um, but with BYO, it gives the end user the ability to literally select from any field in our booked and transactional database to build their own ad hoc query. Mm -hmm. um, the data is all front loaded. So when you click on a field to add it, it actually populates right in front of you. Okay. Um, oh, wow. if, it, if it's not what you wanted, you unclick it and it's gone. And then the last one is the email, which we talked about, which is a game changer that I mentioned before. So there's no need to move between like spreadsheets and your native email. It's all on the platform. So you don't have to do mail merges and Word and Outlook nope. in order to send messages to 15 people that ended up on a list. You can initiate those exactly. emails directly from the tool. Amazing. That's yeah, one of I mean, the reasons was, I screened. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, super helpful for policy adherence items, right? Absolutely. It's like a second yeah. chance at a policy. And one more thing, you can also one click to strip all of the filtering and customization out and start from scratch with the same data set. So you no need to run the data again. Uh, we've made it so you can actually just reset the entire data, remove all the filters and use that data again without having to rerun and wait on the results. So Kate, how does Instant Query play into a company's travel risk management strategy? Um, it can actually factors into a lot of different areas, 100%. So whether it's terrorist activity or a weather-related restriction for travel to a country, not only can you quickly pull travelers currently in that country, but you can also find out who is scheduled to travel there and email them directly from the platform to advise that travel has been placed on hold and to contact the travel department. And you know what? It's not just travel risk management, but it's people risk management now, too. Uh, we have a query that identifies travelers who were in proximity of each other in the case of something or someone who has tested positive for COVID, for example, or any other contagious disease. Um, it groups them by three levels, low, medium, high in terms of proximity, um, high being same flight, same cabin. And again, in-platform email feature allows you to reach out directly to those who are in close proximity and provide guidance on that. Kate, this might be a pointed question, but why is Instant Query better than what's in the market right now? Uh, it's features and it's faster. And like I said, we are laser focused on keeping the instant and instant query. You've got fully ad hoc customizable queries, saved queries for one click retrieval. Uh, decision source reporting will continue to be your flexible workhorse. Um, and of our data engagement offerings year over year, period over period, truly analytic and strategic reporting. An instant query is now your data ninja, your tactical tool in our data toolbox, so to speak. All right, Kate, I want to hear a, a set of examples on how instant query is making a work day better for travel managers. As I alluded to earlier, when I talk to travel managers now, which is one of my favorite things to do is go out and talk to our customers and find out how we can fill these gaps for them from a reporting perspective, is that they want to be able to get back into their program and put their finger on the pulse. Where are my travelers going this week? Um, <clears throat> what countries are they visiting? Um, booked travel compliance adherence has become a little bit of uh, overwhelming in these big data sets. So being able to kind of one click and find out cabin class violations, uh, mm. per diem hotel threshold violators. Right. Um, Who's not flying your preferred carrier between a specific market? And then reach out and email them. Who's mm -hmm. booking zero to three days in advance? And find out why, because that's against policy. Um, like I said, even sh like logistics in the SpaceX case, mm -hmm. um, people risk management, um, instant answers without having to pitch it to an analyst or another third party that they can go in as a travel manager and get the answer super fast without having to wait for somebody else to do it. So things like show me a list of all the travelers flying on United Airlines out of Denver next week. Absolutely. And you can send an email and say, you know, if you've got uh, lounge passes in LaGuardia 
give me a quick list of travelers who are flying out of LaGuardia in the next 48 hours. And you can email them from there and let them pick up the passes or you can e-send them the passes. Mm-hmm. Um, same thing, you you know, who's staying in hotels in the Houston area because we have a new property? Super easy way to say we have a new property. Or at the properties we do have, breakfast is included now or Wi-Fi is included now. Those kind of updates to the travelers on the fly. And Kate, this is available globally. If you have access to decision source, you have access to instant query, right? Absolutely. Yeah. It's going, it's turned on for all. Um, so in, from a skill perspective, anyone um, can use instant query. We have walkthrough videos and tutorials available, but it's super user friendly. Um, but from an access perspective, again, if you have a login to decision source, you have access to instant query. So you can log in, you'll see the new feature link on the left nav. And if you don't have a login, reach out to your PM and let's get you onboarded. So what about sneak peeks for what's coming next for the future? You know, the biggest one is probably query sharing. It was That's going to be a big addition. And what I mean by that is we're going to have the ability for a user to create a custom saved query and then share the query with others in their organization. So just to be clear, we're not talking about sharing data just the query parameters around it. So this, like in a use case, would work for those colleagues that want to share a useful query without the colleague having to rebuild it, but also for PMs who want to build one for their customer and just share it with them and place it into their saved queries. Okay, Kate, last question for you. In just a sentence or two, what's the one thing you want our listeners to know about their own data and how Instant Query can help them? So specifically to travel managers, get back into your data. Know your program again. Um, I'm speaking about downstream from negotiated fares and market shares. Uh, where are your travelers going to be this week? What country are they in? Are they in any high-risk countries? One click. Policy adherence. One click. Affect behavior changes before they happen so you can save money. One click. Um, what I would like to see is travel managers start their day by putting their finger on the pulse of their program and knowing where their travelers are going that day and that week. And IQ enables that. Uh, Kate is so great. You see what I did there, Miriam? <laughs> you know, I've been thinking, Chad, about what to encourage our listeners to give us feedback on. And one of the things I think is really interesting is cultural differences. And in America, in American English, I would call that a dad joke. Um, oh, no. <laughs> and I'm curious to our listeners around the world, um, do you have the concept of a dad joke, dad like just joke, sort of a bad yeah. joke? Uh, and what do you call it in your language? And is it a dad <laughs> joke or is there just a different way to say the same thing? I, <laughs> oh, a bad joke. man. Um, Tough crowd here. Tough crowd on the podcast. <laughs> Well, that is all for this episode. We hope you found it uh, just as fascinating as I know Miriam and I did. But if you're interested in learning more about IQ, head to bcdtravel.com slash podcast to connect with us. Thank you for connecting with us. BCD Travel helps companies travel smart and achieve more. We drive program adoption, cost savings, and talent retention through digital experiences that simplify business travel. Learn more about the topics you heard on this episode by visiting bcdtravel.com slash podcast. <laughs>